All right, so I want to illustrate what this whole process looks like on the HR diagram. This will be our first example of stellar evolution, um, an evolutionary track. So if I take my HR diagram, this is just a screenshot from the simulation we've been playing with. Um, an evolutionary track is just any path that a star makes on the HR diagram as it changes over time. And so this purple curve that I've drawn uh, here is the evolutionary track of a protostar reaching the main sequence. So the main sequence is where stars spend the majority of their lives. Anytime that a star is not on the main sequence, it either means that it's forming or dying. All right, so at the um, kind of the earliest time when you can plot a protostar on the main sequence, that's when it's the most luminous. So it has the highest luminosity at this point in its journey. And so my question for you is why is the protostar so luminous at this stage? More luminous even than it will be when it lands on the main sequence. Okay. I'm seeing most votes for B, which is what I had in mind. Um, what are some reasons that you can rule out some of the other um, possibilities? Yep, it's still going to get hotter. It's moving overall to the left on the HR diagram as it approaches the main sequence. So it's still cool at this point and it's going to get hotter. So that rules out A. What else can we rule out? Also, if it's still a protostar, if we're calling it a protostar, then it definitely means uh, it hasn't achieved fusion yet. So it doesn't have, um, at this point, nuclear reactions. But you're right, we can't tell that on the HR diagram at all. All right, so that leaves us with B and D. Um, D, I, I don't have a specific reason to rule that out. It's just kind of a decoy answer. Um, but so B, it's very large. Um, that's the case. So the protostar is still in the process of shrinking. Therefore, it's still quite large. So even though it's not very hot, um, it just has so much surface area that its luminosity is very high. And the, um, you know, the difference in temperature is, I mean, considerable, it's, it's measurable. We can see it on this evolutionary track, um, but the difference in size is going to be huge. Um, let's see if I can go back to this uh, image here. So we're going from an object that's around 5,000 AU to an object that's around 100 AU. So it's a factor of like at least 50. And um, so there's a, a large change in surface area that goes with R squared as it goes through that huge change in size. Okay, come back here. All right, so after it starts to, you know, after it's even visible on the HR diagram, um, and here it's glowing mostly in the infrared. It's a very low temperature object. But after this, it starts to rapidly contract. So I wanna call your attention to kind of the direction of motion on the HR diagram here. Let me see if I can draw an arrow. Um, so if I draw an arrow, it's mostly down on the HR diagram at this stage. And so as it's going through this um, part of its journey, it's mostly um, low density. So the density is, is increasing slightly as it, um, as it contracts. Um, and at this point, it doesn't have uh, a lot of a way to hold in that heat. So the density is low enough to still be allowing um, the heat to escape in the form of infrared radiation. And so that radiation dumps a lot of the heat that's generated from that gravitational contraction. And so it's increasing its temperature but not a lot. If it were increasing its temperature more, then it would be more of a slanted line or more of a line directly to the left. But at this point, it's decreasing in size more than it's increasing in temperature. So the internal pressure here remains low because the temperature uh, is able to, or sorry, the heat is able to be dumped. So the atoms are not um, hanging on to that um, high temperature. So their pressure remains low as their temperature doesn't change very much. And so if the pressure is low, then that means that gravity is able to continue contracting powerfully. And so that's why this is the fast contraction phase. Okay, so that's the kind of chain of logic as to why we know that this contraction phase is very fast. And like I said before, it happens on the order of thousands of years, which is really quick. I mean, that's even quick on geological type scales on Earth. 
Okay, so the slow contraction process, and um, I mean, good point. This is it, it's not a perfect straight line, but for the most part on this diagram, uh, the contraction process now is going more to the left than it is down. So this slow contraction phase now um, happens because the density is now high enough that radiation has a hard time escaping. And so it's what we would say is an opaque photosphere. So it's no longer radiating infrared as efficiently as it was during that fast contraction phase. And because of that, the radiation gets trapped and it heats up the object. So the temperature now increases more um, quickly than it did before. And as the temperature builds, that causes the pressure to build. And because of that, gravity cannot press down um, into the protostar as quickly. So now the contraction slows down uh, as the temperature builds until the star finally reaches the main sequence um, and ignites nucleofusion in its core. So the main sequence is where the star lives for the rest of its life now. Um, nuclear fusion is now what separates the star from being called a protostar. Um, if an object doesn't have enough mass to reach a high enough inner temperature to start nuclear fusion, then it's a brown dwarf. And it could live on the HR diagram. It would be a low luminosity, low temperature object. Um, so the star that's now on the main sequence will stay there. And for a sun-sized star, at least, um, it'll burn happily for around 10 billion years. So our sun has, you know, a 10 billion year lifespan. And right now we're at four and a half billion. So right in the middle. And we can look at all the other tracks of other massive stars and see that our one solar mass star here in the middle um, has these two phases quite clearly. Lower mass stars seem to um, not have as much of the uh, rapid contraction phase. Their path on the HR diagram is more vertical. And um, higher mass stars have uh, a kind of a longer uh, length of um, that fast contraction phase, or the slow contraction phase, sorry. And uh, this graph has a lot going on, so let me try to walk you through it. Um, all the different traces here are different masses. So 100 solar masses, 10 solar masses, all the way down to 0.1 solar masses. The numbers that are listed are the times that it takes to get to each of these um, stages. So to go from kind of the beginning of this line to this black dot, for example, takes 100 years. And so for the 100 solar mass star, the most massive star here, um, you can see that it gets to the main sequence in only 10,000 years. Whereas if we look at our one solar mass star, um, it takes millions of years before it even reaches the main sequence. And so it's going to spend even more time to get there. And in general, we see that pattern. So if we look at the kind of the last number that we can find on each of these, it's getting larger and larger as we go to lower masses with the 0.1 solar mass star taking, you know, hundreds of millions of years to even reach the main sequence. So the small stars take longer to become actual stars and the biggest stars, um, they evolve quickly to the main sequence and they will die just as quickly. Uh, the other feature on this, this red line is what's called the zero age main sequence. And zero age means that we would say the star is, uh, you know, zero, age zero there. So before then it wasn't a star, it was a protostar. Um, and this is a model. So we, we plot this red line using a model of what we know of other main sequence stars. Um, okay, so then the last feature here is this dashed line. And this is the, uh, the time when the star is um, no longer shrouded by dust so that it becomes visible in the visible wavelength range. So anyway, lots of information packed onto this, but I would say the most important features are these times and the general shapes of the uh, evolutionary tracks of the different massive stars.